And in this video, I will be describing six reasons why you and your company should adopt an API first approach and why they are critical to the future of your company. First, let's run through a very simple example of ordering a pizza to explain what APIs are. So a few years back, if you wanted to order a pizza, you would phone up the pizza place and order a pizza. And on the phone, you would tell the person on the other end of the phone your address and the pizza you would like, the toppings, what base, the size, etc. And the person would then confirm back with the price and time for delivery. Now, if there was more than one person trying to make an order at the same time, if the pizza place only had one person taking orders, then people would have to wait on the line until an order taker became available or the company would have to have more people, more employees available to take the orders, which would be additional expenses to the company. But nowadays, you would use a pizza place website or an application like Sust Eat uh, to perform the same telephone order you would have placed, but now directly on your phone. And that is made possible with APIs. And because APIs don't require a human to take an order, now multiple people can order at the same time. So now let, let's take a moment to understand the two impacts on the pizza place. Now we have replaced a telephone order process with an order system which has been powered with APIs. So now the first benefit, by using API, the communication, the integration between the pizza place and the customer is now quicker. Two, we have now removed the need for humans to take the orders, which leads to automation and the ability to scale, which means the pizza place can now receive hundreds of pizza orders in the time it took for one telephone order to be placed. And having APIs now allow integration and quicker integration between services and third parties. There is a reason why one of the richest men in the world Jeff B of Amazon famously sent an internal memo to Amazon's employees stating that all services must expose APIs and communicate with each other using those APIs. And why banks have embraced open banking APIs and standards. And why Uber, Netflix and AWS and Stripe have all been so successful. Because they have put APIs first because they know that having APIs allow them to be competitive. And you might be asking, why do they make you competitive? Because a good API allows your application and third parties, business partners and customers to integrate quickly with your system and you with other systems. And what is quick, you might be asking? Well, Apigee, which is owned by Google, have, a, have what they call the three fives rule, which states that a developer should be able to understand what an API does by looking at the spec in five seconds. And in five minutes, they should be able to make a successful request and get a successful response back. And they should be able to go to production in five days or less. Now, I don't know about you, but being able to go from an idea to production in five days for an integration is quick. And that time frame can give a company a competitive advantage in its industry by providing functionality quickly. Now, now compare the second part of the 5-5 rule, being able to make a successful operation in five minutes or less, take having to integrate with another system using files. Now, anyone who's watching this, uh, who has integrated with another system by dropping files into a file server, can relate that this is unrealistic to generate a file in the correct file structure and deliver it to another system via protocol like SFTP in five minutes or less. Normally, they take a lot longer. So just to summarise, APIs speed up integration between services and they enable you to deliver functionality quickly. And they also promote reusability and reduce duplication, which I will get to now. 
And how do they reduce duplication? Well, in the development world, there are three ways to reuse code. One, you can copy and paste code and then try to maintain the different code bases and make changes when and where it's required, trying to ensure that each service is updated around the same time. Two, you can create shareable class libraries, which do sound amazing. Who doesn't like creating shareable classes, reusable components, which can be put into other services? Everyone does. But not when you find a critical defect or you need to make changes. Because like copy and paste, when you make changes to the library, you need to manage the updates and changes for the different services across possibly multiple teams. And if you need to upgrade the library to a newer framework version, it, it may not be straightforward to upgrade the framework of the services. So you may actually need to maintain different versions of that class library at the same time. So option three is to create API functions, which you can call from any service, clients with a couple lines of code. Um, and when you need to modify logic, you only need to update one service, one deployable, compared to having to update multiple services but as long as you're not making a breaking change, it should be okay. One change is a lot easier to manage than 20. Put quite simply, APIs become the building blocks which you can reuse in your architecture. APIs also enable quicker innovations and the ability to change quickly. Now, think back a few years ago to when we didn't have client-side frameworks like Angular or React, you would have used a framework which used page load, page load events, uh, server postbacks for laden data and for form submissions. You would have developed large applications, monoliths, where client and server code was tightly coupled together. And in order to test the applications, you would have had to build the applications, run them and test them manually or invest in expensive UI automation. And if you wanted to create another application or rewrite it in a different framework or version, because the UI and the business logic was so tightly coupled together, you would need to normally start from scratch or copy, paste, duplicate the applications and have two code bases running in parallel to each other. But nowadays, if you embrace an API first approach, you are able to develop different client applications like web applications, mobile apps separately and have those different applications using the same APIs without having to reinvent the wheel. Now, some people say that having an API decouples the client from the API. It doesn't really because what happens if the API is down? The client won't be able to query data or update data but it decouples the APIs from the clients, but not the other way around. But what it enables you to do is break apart functionality into separate services, smaller services, microservices, or cell-based functions, which can be developed, tested, deployed, and scaled independently from each other which reduces the risk that you will break functionality in other services. So development teams can work in parallel to each other. This can increase time to market, increasing development cadence, quicker ideas to the market. Once you have your APIs to power your own UI clients, you can quickly develop the ability to have partners and customers to build integration with your system, which can increase your competitiveness and customer satisfaction because your existing APIs will act as the building blocks. Breaking out functionality into their own APIs enables the ability to have specific services to retrieve and manage different objects. Reducing database table sharing. What do I mean by table sharing? Let's say you have one table which holds data which multiple services require. Without APIs, you would have to have all those services 
reading and possibly writing to that those tables. Now if you needed to make a change to that table, you would also need to modify all the services as well. But if you enforce that all services which need to access a particular table or set of tables use a certain API, then you are free to make changes to the database without affecting the, the clients. You only ha have to update one service. And because you're only changing one service, the risk of inducing a breaking change into your system is a lot lower, which gives development teams and the business more confidence to release quicker, which in turn enables companies to innovate and change quicker. So just before I wrap up this video, if you have found this video to be educational so far, please smash that like button. It really helps me out. So in this video, I ran through six benefits of what APIs provide. And they are, one, the ability to automate business functionality, two, scale business functionality, three, allow systems and third parties to integrate qu more quickly with each other, four, reduce duplication and promote reusability of existing functionality, Five, they enable companies to innovate and change and be competitive by getting ideas to market quicker. And six, lowers the risk of introducing breaking changes by reducing database table sharing, by developing and exposing APIs which are dedicated for accessing and modifying different database objects. And they are the six benefits which I have talked about in this video. Now, hopefully you've liked this video. And if you have, please smash that like button.